I am just so damned angry, it's not funny. I have just taken my membership cards from my three sons and myself, and I've just put them in the microwave. Richmond's bitterly disappointing AFL season on the field is threatening to tear the club apart off it. They've finally done it. They've finally broken my heart. I have seen and followed this side for 30 years and had some pretty tough times in those 30 years, but this is it. I found it incredibly tough. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it was, a, it was a hard year for me professionally and personally at the same time. I wasn't the man that I wanted to be. I wasn't the fun, happy-go-lucky coach that, that I generally was. It was well documented that by the end of the season, I, I, I just there was just no clear picture for me. It was a sense of, it was like a feeling of helplessness, you know, like, what do we do? Um, so yeah, it was yeah, it was a pretty bad time, it, and it wasn't a, wasn't a great year. You know, we were so scared of failing, and um, probably didn't live up to the pressure. I sort of felt embarrassed and humiliated that we're in the situation that we were. I got to the stage where I wouldn't even go out and get a coffee. I couldn't bear to face the scrutiny of what people were saying about me, and, and more importantly, my club. When you lose, you look inwardly, and when you win, you look outwardly. And right now, it's all introspective for Richmond. Stop speaking to my mentors and was in a really, really dark place. Well, the morning after the best and fairest of 2016, um, probably my lowest point, I spoke to uh, my father-in-law um, and our leadership coordinator at the time, Jared Murphy, and uh, it was Neville Crowe's funeral that morning as well, so um, I just got to a point where <laughs> I needed to lay it all out on the table um, with Dimmer, and we, we walked away from after the funeral uh, just to a quiet place on our own. I still remember at Neville Crow's funeral, me and, me and Trent in an embrace crying together of how, how you know, how we, we felt and, you know, the journey that we, we went undertook. We, we relied on each other, um, helped each other. It was a special moment, it was a unique moment because we were both trying to show that nothing was going to crack us. Um, but it had. <laughs> and seriously, you have to be blind to understand that Hardwick is not a good coach. I am that frustrated. I am not coming back to the football to watch Richmond this year and while Hardwick is coaching. I always thought I was pretty strong on not letting media comments and people on Twitter and um, all the outside and um, surrounds affecting me, but I probably <laughs> just got to a point where there was so much of it that it started to you know, break down the barriers that I had up that I thought were strong, um, and then that starts to, to affect your thinking. Richmond will head into the summer with a massive review to come. Well, they need to start the rebuild again. You know, it's going to be Damien's eighth year next year. And his game style to me is outdated mm. and isn't sort of stacking up against the opposition clubs. So massive concerns of Richmond. I, I thought about, listen, is, is it the right time for, for me to step aside? Having the thoughts that I had about captaining you know, a great football club. I'm sure there was times where he, he, and I don't think it would have been based on the confidence that he had in himself, it would have been for the betterment of the football club. Um, and that's the only reason he would have ever considered walking away, I would think. I'd like to think he didn't, because <laughs> we knew that he was the right man. So after coming this far, are we gonna walk away from the challenge of taking that next big step on a road to, to pathway to success? Are we going to hand over the club and say it's all too hard? No, we're not. Not on my watch. I don't reckon Dim is a quitter. Yeah, I was really adamant that I wanted to make amends. Yeah, you know, season 2016 didn't define me or our club, and 
I was really, uh, really driven to make sure that that wasn't the last, uh, the last uh, season that Damien Harvick was going to coach. Yeah, it brings out the emotions, there's no doubt, because you know, season 2016 was, was so hard. My wife spoke to me about, listen, you're not the guy that I love or know anymore. You, you've changed. And it really made me, made me think and delve into what made me, me. She just wanted her best partner back. Um, and that was a real spark to, to get me going. The biggest thing I found that when I was at my best from a coaching point of view, believe it or not, it was when I was coaching my daughter's under 13 basketball side, where there's no fear of outcome. It was Damien Hardwick being fun, loving what he's doing, enjoying the company of the, the girls that he was coaching, and just enjoying the fact that you're yeah, working with a group of people to have a common goal. But that's where I found my, my love of coaching again. It wasn't like he came in and just went, righto, I've done all this work and good luck. <laughs> He cleverly implemented ideas along the way. Um, you know, he introduced the Triple H sessions. It dawned on me, and I was close with the players, but I wasn't close enough. I stumbled across the Triple H in a book I was reading. The three H's stand for Hero, Hardship and Highlight. Every player and staff had to present to the group their three H's. Brandon Ellis spoke about his hardship as a teenager growing up and the fact that he lived in a commission flat and he used to walk one kilometre further uh, on his way home from school, just so he didn't have to show that his mates had elected a commission flat. Uh, and I felt truly embarrassed as a coach, and as a person that knew Brandon for six years, uh, that I didn't know this. Which just gave a, a deeper understanding to people, um, what makes them them. You know, we're all unique and we got to know each other on a uh, deeper level and just, yeah, created a unbreakable connection and it was just it was just yeah it was really special there's, there's no doubt it had a huge bearing on what we did in season 2017. I think Dimmer's ref most refreshing part of 2016's pre-season and 2017's season was um, just allowing people to be themselves. It was just a happy place to be around. And when you invest in someone and they invest in you that, that's when really great things started to happen and we actually connected and became closer as a result. AFL footy is incredibly tough, but if you make it where the players actually desire to come, you're going to get a better result, aren't you? It was just a, a very different vibe at the club, and it was very refreshing. A bit more, a bit more relaxed, and just a bit more of a positive, positive environment. We wanted the players to come in with a smile and walk away with a smile. No, no bad, the loss, no great, the win. We wanted to walk out every day thinking, you know what, this is a great place to be. And for their coach tonight, Damien Hardwick, he's in his eighth season, three consecutive finals in 13, 14 and 15, but down to 13th place last year. We all know that Dimmer needs a big year and so do the Tigers. That it wasn't so much worried about the win and loss, but all right, if we are going to do this, what's it going to look like? You know, we're a strong and bold club. Well, let's play strong and bold. Let's see what that looks like and, more importantly, what it, what it feels like. Rioli goes bang and kicks the goal forward. Banging into full forward. Dusty. Hard to try and chase. He can kick a goal, the skipper. Martin, gold sack, chance, beautifully Greg, and kick the ripping goal, the half-time siren. Well done, Revolt. Standing in the right spot for two. It's been a different year and it's a different Richmond this year. That's the beauty of it for Tiger fans. For the first time in 22 years, Richmond start the season 5-0. We're in a fair hole in 2017 when we lost four on the trot. I think we lost three by goal. You know, the, the Fremantle game, we didn't play well all day and you know, we finally got our noses in front, played some good footy and then David Mundy, not for the first time. This could be double deja vu. Cameron, maybe for the game. Oh, no! I'm not sure we've ever had seven days of this heartache 
for an AFL team like this before. Who'd if want? you're still watching at home and you uh, haven't put your foot through the telly. Well, who'd want to be a Richmond supporter, Jason? After the GWS game, Dimmer got pretty emotional, but everyone's attitude was just, you know, let's learn from it, which we did, and it was a good thing that we learned it then rather than in the finals. I remember people were looking for me to start to lay the boots in him aside. And I sat there and I said, well, you know what? I'm so proud of these blokes. I knew with the group that we had that anything was possible. They, they were an outstanding group of young men that were really driven to be something special and they loved the way they played. Richmond coach Damien Hardwick is in phase by Dustin Martin meeting with the Kangaroos. The out-of-contract star is set to head to New Zealand next week to discuss his future with his father. Um, yeah, obviously we flew over uh, to see Dad and lengthy conversations and spoke about what I wanted and what would be best for my future. I probably got the sense that he was a little bit more distant than what he'd normally been over the, you know, the years I'd known him. And that was when I first got a little bit worried about, oh, geez, this mightn't go the way that I thought it would. Hello everyone, well Dustin Martin's football future appears closer to being resolved. Dustin Martin's manager Ralph Carr has told us he remains confident that there will be a decision. So he's obviously in New Zealand at the time, uh, by week leading into finals. Where I think it was coming down to, to D-Day and for the whole year I was really, really confident that he'd be a Tiger. And then for whatever reason I just, there was just a moment, not, not a significant amount of worry, but enough for me to go and that was when I first got a little bit worried about oh geez this mightn't go the way that I thought it would so I was on the in the room on my own and he called me and I'll never forget I was being on the phone and I let out a yelp like a 12 year old schoolboy when he told me he was staying I was that excited I had tears so then I called Dimmer and I just sounded him out tried to suss whether he knew and he's staying and we both, yeah, just went crazy. Good evening, and we start with exclusive breaking news on Dustin Martin's contract. With reports this afternoon, Martin has agreed to stay at Richmond. Dustin Martin will be a Tiger for life. The amount of money he turned down to stay with us is life-changing. And that's the sort of person he is. He's incredibly loyal. You know, I, I teared up. It was, it was special, you know. It just created, created a super close bond, and, yeah, it's something I cherish. Now, I'll never forget where I was when Dustin Martin called me to tell me he's staying a Richmond player for basically the rest of his life. And this Tiger transformation is just about complete. They've gone from no hopeless last year to suddenly being in the top four. There's a number four that we all hear about, Dustin Martin, and there's been no person that's had a greater influence on that bloke's career than, than our number nine. You know, and it's something that, you know, Var Marich really started at our footy club about that, that sweeping the sheds mentality, but that's what great leaders do, you know, they set the example. That's what I've always loved about Trent, he's always done that. He's very respectful, um, leads from the front, he's very humble. It's uh, captain of my footy club, get a bit emotional to speak about him sometimes, but, you know, the lessons I learned from that guy are incredible. You know, there's more to, to sport and life than just winning. Um, for me, it was just the journey we were on together. The biggest ever qualifying crowd, Richmond and Collingwood back in 1972. 91,900, Bruce, can tell you that that's already been broken. Goodness me, a couple of smiles and both men absolutely ecstatic to be here involved in this game. The Tigers have never beaten Geelong while Hardwick has been coach. This is my role and I am recognised and almost cherished amongst the group for committing to that. It's a different Richmond feel to all those days and all those finals. It's the pressure, it's the tackling. Martin crashing and bashing, can't quite get through. Little handball, Butler zigging, zagging. It's because we'd lost those three finals previously, there was that, that demon of expectation that, oh geez, Richmond, they haven't won a final. Brandon Ellis and Patrick Dangerfield came together in a huge collision. Paddy gets a pat on the bum from one of his teammates. Seven guys come to Brandon Ellis. That's the love and the unity our team had for each other. It was just so special because we had um, been through, you know, thick and thin together. That is a good, good, good. He knew it. The Tiger Army knew it. Happy supporters everywhere. For two in a row. But have a look at this. That's as good as it gets, team 
top was rewalled with one hand. What a pick up from Plonchin. Left foot oh. snap. The goal of the game. Trent Plonchin. Look at him get it. been the most remarkable evening. Dangerfield again, Plonchin. He just kicked the most fabulous goal. Martin trying to get out of it. He does. And then Hooley soccers the ball forward. It's all happening. And he's kept that record going. The Tigers are into the freedom. After the way we propelled ourselves onto the Geelong Footy Club, I thought, you know what, we are a chance here. You dare to dream, absolutely. Prelim final is the purest day of footy you'll get. It is for the pure footy fan, the purest of our game, and they're generally the best games of footy. Well, I probably never thought I'd see something like this from Leeds, that there's going to be close to 100,000 supporters basically barracking for one team here today. It's so hard to get to a final series, let alone to a prelim or to top four, but we're always confident that our best footy stacks up and we could win, but I guess starting into the finals is all, yeah, why not, why can't we win it? Incredible, you know, to have... 95% of the stadium filled in your colours. Um, it was just an incredible feeling. Who will it be? The Tigers or the Giants? We've got a whistle to start things off. And there's a whistle the Tigers won. That first goal where Koch kicks it in. Jack Mate has a great marking contest. Dusty rolls a pack, handballs it to Lambert. <laughs> oh, God. It was like the glass in the coach's box which sort of separates us from the fan. You, you could sort of see it reverberating. It was an amazing feeling. I, I still I, I still get shivers thinking about it. Smothered Dusty comes in and says, I've had enough of this. Up into Tomlinson. Look at Dusty inject himself. He's been held. The way we, we, we ran out with the game, you know, it was pretty close for a fair chunk of it. The Tigers just starting to win the footy around the ball, starting to control it. It was just a really, really strong feeling that anything is possible this year. Runs to 50, looks pretty good off the boot from Rioli, looked great off the boot. Oh, that roar. Up at the 125 DB mark, it's the loudest we've had so far. The wait is over. The Tigers, yes, the Tigers. The Tigers are in the grand final! Can you believe it? Bloody hell. Hundred thousand people here. And it's just about been the toughest ticket to get for any grand final in living memory. After you run through the banner, you go there and there's like a, an old schoolyard photo. I look at our players and our players are smiling and laughing, hands on shoulders. And I reckon I look at that straight away, easy in hindsight, I know, but I think we're never going to lose this game today. A fairy tale happening here at the MCG. Underway. It was really special. You see the crowds there and being lucky enough to be out there and playing and feeling the energy out there. And it was just an unbelievable experience. Got a piece for long ball. Here comes Rewalls! What a grab in the grand final! Jack! Brown at the back. Martin won the footy. He ruled his way through it. Little kick forward. Hurley to kick a goal. It has. Big that was. Thought about putting it on the boot, gave it off to Castagna. Right foot snap, got it. Goodness gracious me! Footy. To see the emotion, the passion of these fans. Banana on the stand. It's rare for the boundary line. Look at the Tigers come from everywhere. Look at the coaches box. Look at the fans. And look at the front row. 37 years and the Tigers are kings of the jungle again. There is no doubt about it at all. It's going to finish at the putt road end of the ground. The Tigers are going to win the Premiership.
I sort of needed 2016 to, to bring me back to, to what I needed to be. I got back to the coach and husband and father that I, that I wanted to be because of that season. It's a pretty cool story and, and I think it just proves that anything's possible. To see the joy on the fans' faces is the best thing ever. It's been a while since they've tasted success. And finally, to the Tiger Army. This one's for you! I always felt this belief deep inside me that we were going to get somewhere. That's a great thing about AFL, there's 17 other clubs that are sitting here thinking this year's a year. Tell me Dustin got a bit teary too, did he or not? <laughs>